The Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS, is a group so vicious and unmanageable that Al-Qaeda expelled them in February of 2014. ISIS uses the ever-expanding safe haven straddling the Iraq-Syria border to pursue a regional Sunni caliphate. Originally intent on striking the regime in Damascus, ISIS has more frequently battled an array of Syrian opposition forces who in turn suspect ISIS of colluding with President Assad. Iraqis dominate ISIS leadership, operate robust local and international funding schemes, and lead several thousand foreign fighters from more than 70 countries in their assault on Iraq's Shiite-dominated government. What do these dramatic developments mean for an already volatile Middle East and the wider world? The question the country has to think through is whether it's possible to uh, effectively uh, create an alternative government uh, in Iraq without the uh, acquiescence of Iran and you know, the person who is uh, really the, the key stakeholder uh, now, I would say, who's the head of the Quds Force, Qasem Soleimani. Uh, is it possible to, to think about uh, pulling this country back together without uh, Iran on that shit. And my answer would be no. Uh, that if, if you want to go it without Iran, uh, you'll effectively uh, cement the partition of Iraq without any hope uh, worse of having a formula for over time uh, pulling it back together. You cannot make decisions regarding the two holiest places in Shia Islam by excluding the Iranians. You cannot make decisions regarding a country that's on their border by excluding Iran. Even though Iran is in every piece of U.S. policy, whether it be the nuclear issues, support to terrorism, any energy security, economic issues, it's all out there. They have morphed from what we would call a terrorist group, maybe as recently as three or four months ago, into actually I would consider to be a terrorist army. So it's a problem like we haven't seen, quite frankly, since the towers went down in 9-11. I would offer this, too, is that with this morphing, they also have demonstrated an extraordinary understanding of the use of propaganda in the modern world. They've done things with Twitter, with the Internet, with all sorts of modern IT communication, which extends their ability to, to create fear and intimidation in ways that no other terrorist group, I think, has applied so far. I think they're way ahead of al-Qaeda. But of course, the question remains, how do you step, stop ISIL since they're the ones that are actually generating this chaos and this crisis? Now, this is my view. I would offer to you that ISIL is an evil force. And I would offer to you they can only be stopped by force. And I don't think they have any interest in negotiating in any way that makes sense to us in the 21st century. It's an extension of what we see in the post 9-11 environment. Is it possible to do effective targeting? And the answer uh, for the moment, I think, is no, but will soon be um, sort of. And so uh, I think one reason that we're sending uh, these additional advisors is to have people on the ground who can uh, get the kind of information that's only available uh, when you're there. It has been reported that we have uh, so-called ISR uh, surveillance resources in the air uh, over the key parts of Iraq now, uh, and so that tells you that given the extraordinary capabilities the U.S. has, uh, better information is on the way. So uh, if I was an ISIS uh, cadre, uh, I would, I would uh, not be sleeping well. What accounts for the appeal of ISIS? If you're a Sunni in Iraq, it's pretty clear. Revenge against a Shia government that's alienated you, brought violence to your family. A lot of reasons. If you may be a purist and you believe in what ISIS says about reestablishing the Sunni Islamic Caliphate, of bringing religion and the practice of Islam back to the time of the ancestors, the Salafs, then that's appealing to you. If you are a Sunni from other parts of the world, then you're a sectarian. It's the battle against the Shia. In a previous project, I was in Peshawar, Pakistan. I interviewed a leading journalist who said, don't forget what Zarqawi, remember the initial originator of this group, said when bin Laden and Zawahiri, al-Qaeda core leadership, wrote to him and said, stop killing Shia, 
stop beheading Americans, it's not good for public relations, et cetera, et cetera. And he re returned message saying, anti-Americanism is learned behavior, anti-Shiism is innate. If you're a foreign fighter, it's adventure, it's a legitimate jihad in the eyes of many people, it gives you purpose. If you're a sectarian, again, um, opportunity, um, also to return home with credibility in a place where you may have been marginalized in every way and to bring violence back home. One of the great counterterrorism tools that the United States should, can bring to the table around the world is jobs. Yeah. I have a very strong belief that jobs and the things that we have done here in our own country make a significant difference because I've talked to young men, if they had a job and they had a sense they could support their family, raise their children and actually make something of their lives, it becomes more difficult for them to sit there and listen over a period of three or four nights in a row to a recruiter for Al-Qaeda or now ISIL. Yeah. Our security response uh, cannot be only to the, uh, with the central government at this time because of the complexity uh, of what has happened in Iraq. As the immediate crisis ebbs, because right now we've got a you know, three alarm fire to put out, mm -hmm. but as it ebbs to lead a process drawing in the key regional powers, balancing Saudi Arabia and Iran finally, so that this insane Sunni Shia uh, fratricide uh, will, will, will have, a, have an end point, um, bringing in the permanent five members of the UN Security Council, all of whom have an interest in, in right. stopping this process of, of disintegration and, and, and taking the lead in thinking, what's, what's this part of the world going to look like right. under some new structure? Without a political settlement uh, or a progress on the political settlement, an attack alone can, uh, on the ISIS can, uh, uh, you know, there are going to be all kinds of complications that uh, uh, David talked about, about uh, knowing where they are or the, how mixed they are with others, uh, how urgent uh, uh, where the, the, the target is that must be dealt with. But I believe that, that uh, the, uh, a, 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 an airstrike alone can degrade uh, the threat, uh, but will not uh, uh, fundamentally changed in the situation. Kind of a marriage uh, of uh, diplomacy to get the political th uh, uh, situation right, as the ambassador sh uh, said, to get the people on your side to be able to win against the, the extremists and terrorists, and then uh, 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 to apply the, the, the military measure. Um, but we all know, I mean, at least my judgment is, absent that, you, you would have a perhaps the jury, if not de facto division uh, uh, and instability for some time to come. Once you get into the programmatic of what it is that you're going to do, I mean, assuming a, a post-assessment uh, and the assessment uh, comes, we, here is a kind of the military capability that exists that we could invest in and build up and provide them this capability. I'm putting on the table that we that assessment should include what are the local forces and elements that need to be taken into account because in the, the first instance, if they switch from ISIS uh, and work against ISIS, they, uh, um, assuming the other things are in place, which is a big assumption, uh, you would need people on the ground because I agree with David that the central forces going back and taking all these places uh, may be difficult. David has put some other option on the table, but, uh, but putting that aside for the moment, uh, one of the elements has got to be local uh, forces, local leaders. Regional powers, especially Jordan, are nervous about this open U.S. military involvement in, in their country and would do it only if there's political cover that makes them feel comfortable. So I just would... Uh, float the idea that um, for this stabilization force, and you could actually imagine a similar force going into the Sunni areas of Iraq. I mean, the, the idea that the Iraqi army is going to retake Mosul, uh, I don't think that's going to happen, folks. Um, but it's possible that some stabilization force working with tribal leaders uh, could begin over time to, to bring a degree of stability.